Um, so I'm Charlotte, this is my colleague Gary. We're here from Warsaw um, Healthcare NHS Trust in the West Midlands, local. Um, we're here to tell you about our Little Voices um, project that is ever expanding and we are incredibly proud of. So as I've just said, that is us. I'll get through these slides really quickly. This is just to tell you all a little bit, sorry, I'm probably not on the mic. Um, this is to tell you all a bit about Walsall Manor Hospital. We're a medium-sized DGH, um, and as you can imagine, paediatrics forms a quite small cog of that. So to get us out there, to get our voices heard, um, has been one hell of a journey for us in paediatrics, and we've been supported by some great teams. In terms of what we are in, pa in, in our paediatric unit, we're a 21 in bed inpatient unit, jack of all trades, as a lot of general paediatric units are. We offer level one paediatric critical care. We have um, a newly co-located paediatric assessment unit that now sits alongside our paediatric ED in our brand new state-of-the-art um, UECC centre. We have children's outpatients. We have an in-house CCN team, um, and they also deliver virtual ward service. We um, also sit alongside our neonatal colleagues. We have a 15-bed 15 cot neonatal unit and we have a few CNSs around as well who work in epilepsy, respiratory, diabetes. So small but well formed is where we are. This really started to develop when we started to look at initially feedback that we got. Um, we, we had the standard FFT which we all know and love um, but we knew that we wanted to work hard, harder getting the voices of children, young people, and the families that come through our services. So quite a few years ago now, we developed tops and pants. Children tell us, children young people tell us what's tops and what's pants. We've got a little washing line on, in the ward. They get hung out to dry every month, and we use that feedback to make some real-time changes. More recently, we asked our parents to start to give us a bit of feedback as well, so we developed ups and downs for them. It's a bit less um, visual than tops and pants, but... The parents can give us ups and downs. Our neonatal unit very recently joined us by having sharks and dolphins for them. They, their theme in our newly, well, I say newly built, it's been about three years now, um, neonatal unit is around, the theme is around the sea and the ocean. Um, so they use sharks and dolphins. But again, it's the, that feedback that we can get, that real-time feedback, this is what it's like here and now. We also have a really well-established parent support group in our neonatal unit that's run by our um, neonatal outreach team. And with the help of Gary's team now, we have patient involvement partners. We're really increasing the use of volunteers in our paediatric services. I was at a separate event a couple of days ago, and there was a lot of discussion about the use of volunteers in paediatrics. And um, we're ahead of the game, so Gary, we're going to have questions coming our way about that. Um, but it's something that, again, we're really developing and we're really proud of. And uh, an initiative that Gary's more, far more affay with than I am is about the use of mystery patients, kind of like mystery shoppers, but mystery patient feedback. And the, the depth and quality of the feedback we get from that is amazing. But where did little voices come from then? So, the, you know, the feedback, that was one element of it. Back in from the Children and Young People's um, inpatient survey in 2020, as every trust does, when it comes through, you get your results and you sit there and you, 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 know, you really work through it, comparing yourself to others, etc. Some emerging themes came out that it was really clear we wanted to work on. Our facilities and access to play. Now, we've got to remember that the sampling for this took place right at the beginning of COVID. So, especially in a DGH, a lot of our services wound back. So, access to our playroom, our hospital play specialists, if you work in a DGH and you work with hospital play specialists to get a qualified one, you know, it's incredibly difficult and it's a challenge. So, carrying that on through the challenge of COVID was really difficult, but the feedback was really clear that that's where some of our biggest challenges were. So, I launched a campaign with our senior sisters, our senior nursing team, who was quite new coming together as a team, called it Back to Basics, and it is exactly what it said on the tin. It was launching a campaign to say, look, take ownership of your areas back. We're coming out. We need to renormalise. We need to get things back on track. Here's what everyone is telling us about our service. 
we need to start really making the improvements and owning that at, at ward level. At the time, um, I was new in role in my divisional director of nursing role, and I didn't want to be the one dictating to them. I really wanted them to own and run with it. So we launched Back to Basics, and that really got the momentum going, which is where our Little Voices team came in. And at this point, I am going to hand over to my colleague and the strength behind this project, really, and Gary. But these children are amazing. They, they are our little inspectors. Mm -hmm. This is Freya, Tommy, Alfie, Caden, Melody and Molly. Um, and this wasn't just a one-off. We've seen them a few times and they're coming back to tell us more. So this is something that is ever developing and it's something that I am incredibly proud of. So I'm going to hand over to Gary. Thank you, Charlotte. And I think those children, Freya, Tommy, Alfie, Caden, Melody and Molly, need a virtual round of applause because I know back at their school today... They will be looking forward to this result because they are the stars of the show. They are absolutely diamonds. Five of those six children, service users, people who've used the hospital services, one of them a looked after child, very difficult background, but that girl has come to light by this involvement within our trust and we're really proud of them. Inviting children in to a, an acute setting, but any setting is always a risk because you're not sure what they're going to say. <laughs> and blow me, they did say some things. <laughs> However, I've got to be quick, I know, so I'm going to try and skip through some of this. However, we actually readapted the 15 Steps Challenge. We made it a children's version by using the children's voice to amplify what they felt should be included in that. Make it child-friendly. The visual stuff. The words that they will understand and will associate with. We did a lot of work around infection prevention. So our IPS lead joined us at a preschool visit where we passed the poo, as you can probably see it there, and tested it afterwards. And when they came back to the acute hospital, they got to see what they grew. Now, believe me, what they grew wasn't worth communicating to them because their parents would be horrified. That said, it was a good bit of fun and I won't tell you what I grew. So, we went through the different, the different steps. So, is the ward welcoming? Is it a safe area? Um, will this ward care and involve me? Is this ward well organised and calm? We also went into our ED, children's area, paediatric assessment unit as well. And the children, in all the pre-visits and the pre-work we did with them, got to know and understand what they should be looking out for. So it wasn't about their parents or the carers, it was about them. And taking on that crucial UNICEF right of the child to be heard, listened to and understood was key and crucial to all of this. They assessed the lunch. Now, the, the, what the children said about their lunch and what we thought of it were completely different. Everything we hated, they loved. But they, they went away, full tummies, very happy with the food that was given to them. They also assessed, it's not on there, but they assessed their play. So they, the play specialist did three exercises with them and they got to assess uh, the content, whether it was interesting to them, whether, was, whether there was enough to do, whether it actually was something that could occupy their minds when they were not feeling very well. They also designed the hand cleaning observation sheet, and those hand, hand hygiene audits are used today. So on the children's ward, we encourage those patients to look out for the different members of staff, and all their uniforms are colour-coded as to whether or not they're regularly carrying out appropriate hand hygiene. They also looked at the overall visit, so they as Charlotte has already alluded to, what was tops, what was pants, and the best part of the day. As you can see from there, lots of things that they said we could improve on. I'm not going to go into the detail. However, some of that stuff has already been acted upon. Toilet signs, so children can see. We think it's easy to see a toilet sign. They're saying, actually, that means nothing to us. It's not visual enough, particularly when we want to go in a rush. Kids-themed pillows, linen, um, hand gel that, it's, that they're able to actually reach instead of being at an adult height and, in, and a wheelchair user, for example but also toys and different other aspects of the care. A lot of evidence there of what we've done. We've got a refurbished play, play area now, utilising some of that feedback. Top toilet tips, which cover all the toilet doors on entrance, 
all about me boards above every patient bed which they designed um, and more importantly and I am then going to stop this is what we are now doing on the back of all of that feedback so we've launched the children's version of it's okay to ask so that their parents and carers and the child can feel confident about asking about their care but more importantly getting involved in it as well we've signed up for the little journey app which will support pre-hospital anxiety to so help children who are going in for surgery, for example, to do some exercises with their parents about reducing anxiety. And our patient voice feedback scores are the highest it's ever been. They're in the 90s. So that shows you that some of the work we've done is having an impact. Um, and there's lots more we're doing. Um, I just want to just touch on this, if you will forgive me, Ruth. So I'll just start from the left. <laughs> We are having a sleep time charter, they're currently working on that in school, a bedtime, um, sorry, a meal time charter. We're having our inspectors back in to visit our outpatients department um, in December. Gift a gown so that those children who come into hospital, whose parents are not all, can't afford clothing and things, they're going to get hospital gown and hospital pyjamas. So I could go on, I won't, <laughs> but little voices. If there's anything you can do today, they are our future. They need to be heard, listened to, and nurtured. Really, piece of work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.